Right, so Heidi Beats, um, you're from Australia, from the sort of Brisbane, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Brisbane. Yeah. Uh, we're both at the uh, Intersection Conference on Enterprise Design in Lisbon in the Academy of Sciences. Um, what I'd like to ask you is about how you see the relationship between enterprise design and enterprise architecture, mm -hmm. and particularly what kind of lessons learned that you've got in the work that you've done within the Australian context. So um, enterprise architecture um, traditionally is more aligned to business and more broadly in Europe and other places, but in Australia it's still very much centred around um, senior solution architecture or IT architecture. So the language that people use when they describe what they actually do is um, it's misleading and at points confusing. So at the moment I'm a manager of business architecture and that term itself people um, don't really understand it because it kind of means uh, more business analysis to some people. So to other people, it's more business design. But, uh, or they go, but you, you've got architecture in the title, so it throws people off. So when I introduce myself to people, I, I usually say I'm an enterprise architect for the customer, business and information domains, and that seems to help. Um, the, the beauty of enterprise design opposed to just architecture uh, or enterprise architecture is more that it um, brings together um, design and architecture so that people can play nicely together and focus on the problems or opportunities rather than the discipline itself. So a lot of the frameworks that I've worked with um, over the years, they're, they're kind of cre creating a little bit of friction because they're overlapping um, and their language is different. So it, it's confusing. So this, I think, enterprise design is something I'm really interested in because it cuts through that and focuses on um, the value Mm. <coughs> on the solution IT or the, the IT <coughs> focus, in fact, my experience is it's actually better in mm -hmm. Australia rather than worse. This often comes as a surprise to people in Australia. No. <laughs> but but the, the other question I had was the one about best uh, sort of mm -hmm. uh, lessons learned, things that you tell other people yes. about the things that you don't want to repeat. Mm, that's um, a tough you've, one. You've, all <laughs> the successes that you've had, the things that you found that really do work. Uh, find common ground in the value that you're trying to create. Um, don't always wear your hat. Yeah. That's that's my yeah. biggest one. So I've worked uh, really hard in places um, to find common ground with the customer experience guys. Is my first point yeah. of call. Um, customer strategy and the data people because mm -hmm. a lot of people say like, I hear a lot of leaders asking for AI and, and they don't understand that that's business rules plus great data and uh, often aligned to thinking front and back office mm -hmm. for really great yeah. um, automation for uh, for What's customer problems. <laughs> yeah. What's and, the point? What's it going to do? It's, it's, that's the first question, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. And when you tie everything back to what's what's the um, value that we're trying to create? Yes. So are we trying to lower operational costs? Are we trying to reduce complexity and technical debt? And are we trying to make great customer experience for advocacy? Then it's much easier to cut through because you're focusing less on what the actual frameworks are telling you or what, what, um, what tasks you think you own, and it brings it back to their value. Great. Yeah. <coughs> well, thanks very much for that. Thanks, Tom. Great. Yeah. Thanks.